Hi, this is Juliet. Today, I'm speaking with folk singer-songwriter Marie Miller, who has accumulated millions of plays across streaming platforms with hit record 6-2, You're Not Alone, and her newly released single, Brighter Days. Marie has talked a lot about her music and ideas, but in this episode, we are going behind the scenes to learn about how she made it all happen. How did she land a record deal at the age of 17, perform for the Pope, and ultimately pursue an independent career? This is her bumper breakdown. So thank you so much for talking to us, Marie. I'm really excited to talk to you about your latest release, Little Dreams, as well as your um, time as an artist from being in a record with a record label and being independent. So I wanted to jump in with your time with a record label. Um, I learned that despite being only 17 years old, you signed with Curb Records, um, an independent record label in Nashville, with also like Lee Bryce and Dylan Scott. So how did you land that opportunity and what made you decide to sign with Curb? Yeah, so I was young. We actually had to uh, go and have a judge, like make sure because I was under, you know, underage. And so my parents and I went and they had to make sure that I wasn't being forced <laughs> to do it, um, which I definitely wasn't being forced. I always wanted to be a performer uh, as a child that's you know it's been my dream for so long and so getting on a record label especially at the time uh that was about you know 13 years ago um or maybe more like almost yeah I'm 31 so 14 and it it made sense it was the next step um in in my journey as a musician and I had some really great years but uh definitely uh when, when independence came, it felt very powerful and exciting. Right, definitely. Was there a song or EP or event that kind of led you to your first big break when you were younger? Yes, so I had some music out when I was young, 17, and then I actually took a break from music and went to school for a couple of years, kind of just wanted to figure out do I really want to do this? Because once we hit the ground running, it was, it was getting busy. We had a, a song actually on Christian radio. Um, and so I just knew that was, you know, I wouldn't have the normal life. And, and so I tried to have a normal life for a couple of years and I realized that I guess I, I'm just not fit for the normal life. So I went back into music and, and, um, a song called, uh, you're not alone, uh, was released and that, um, was on pop radio. And, um, I got to open for the Backstreet Boys singing that song. And, no way. Yeah. It was <laughs> oh my so God. cool. Yeah, Nick Carter shook this hand. <laughs> you've never and you've never washed it since. Before COVID, yes, but now, right, right, yeah. right. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yep. Yeah. So, so that was huge. Uh, Six foot two was on Dancing with the Stars. So I had a song out, and um, that that was kind of those couple of things that happened around the same time. Really, you know, it, it created enough of a story that we could bring it to radio and bring it to press and, and try to make something happen. You were saying that you went to school for a couple of years just to see if that was what you wanted to do. Like you suggest that all people who are younger do that, like to, to have that comparison to make sure that that's what I, they want to do. I think so. I think that it's very hard to work in this industry. I think all industries have their major challenges. But one thing is with this is that you are the product. So I am Marie Miller and that's a good thing, right? But when you, when you're saying I'm Marie Miller and what do you guys think about it? Because it's your mute, it's you. And it can be really taxing as an adult, but as a young, young person, like you just have to be ready and willing. And also I think with, uh, especially with social media and this, you know, we want to be known, we want to be seen. And so I think some young, and I've, I've talked to a lot of young musicians is that they're focusing a lot more on the fame part. You know, like I want to be a YouTube star and that's okay. But really the, the beauty and the importance and the weight of the glorious thing that is music is music itself. So if like you play for five people or 5,000 people, the, the heart of it was the music. And so don't, so don't focus too much on that. And it can be harder to do that when you're younger, I think. I definitely focused more on that when I was younger anyway. There's probably more virtuous people out there. But I, was, I want to be famous! You know? Right, right. Well, speaking of performing in front of 750,000 people, in 2015, you had the opportunity to perform in front of the Pope. 
and 750,000 people. Um, could you describe the experience and how did this happen? Yeah, I have really no idea how they, well, I do know, but it's just such a, a, a beautiful um, story because it's basically the guy that was hiring everybody for when Pope Francis was coming to Philadelphia. So they're having a bunch of performers, including Aretha Franklin, Andre Bocelli, The Fray, um, Jim Gaffigan was doing comedy. Mark Wahlberg was the MC, And uh, yeah, it was crazy. And the promoter's wife heard the song Six Foot Two on Sirius XM. And she said, I love that song. We should have this girl too. And never um, underestimate the power of women and their influence on their husbands. I was like, girl, <laughs> thank you so much. Um, so, so yeah, so, she, uh, so he called me and I, I totally thought it was, I, I don't, I thought it was like a prank call almost. Um, and I finally realized, and, and also the, it was, we played for 750,000 people, but also was on CNN and Fox news. So it's pretty, pretty crazy. And, and, but the best part was, I thought was just, uh, performing in front of you know a hero of mine, you know Pope Francis, and gives the thumbs up, and so it's just the cutest thing to have a pope give you a thumbs up. So that was the best wow. part. Yeah, definitely. And so, how did this performance change and grow your fan base? Well, what it did more than anything is that you just when you say you've played for a pope, it just gets you know it, it helps you out when you're trying yeah. to get to that small club somewhere <laughs> in Toledo. Uh, so. Yeah, and so that's really what it did. It was just a great little um, uh, little liner on on my applications for everything I do now. So that, that's what I would say. More than more than blowing me up, it was that. That's what it was. Yeah, definitely. So also in your time working with a record label, what did you learn, and what things did you like and not like about being with a record label? Yeah, well, the great thing about a record label is that they have money <laughs> and they can help you do a lot of things, um, with marketing and recording and just having that whole team, you know, um, for, you know, there's so many parts to, you know, makeup artists and people booking flights and, and different things. And, and so I was pretty spoiled. I had no idea how to do a lot of things when I got out of the record label, but the, the biggest thing that was, um, that was hard was even though I had a, a flexible, good record label, they were not those, those stories that you hear where they're not letting you do anything you want to do. And they're forcing you to wear certain things, whatever. But, um, we had had some success with a more pop sounding song and then their minds, understandably, they're like, okay, now you're going to do pop. But as an artist, like we don't work like that. And so to me, I knew that I had to make music that was true to who I was. And so when I left my record label, I thought, I don't know what the next step is, but I know there will be music that I'm proud of. And there's going to be a lot. I play the mandolin. There's going to be a lot of mandolin in it. There's going to be lyrics that are not poppy lyrics. Um, And so, so yeah, so I said the biggest thing is freedom. And if we're not able to create as artists with freedom, you know, you're kind of painting with one, um, you know, with your hands tied and it doesn't really work. So. Right. And this kind of goes back to what you were saying when you're younger, like your product is your music. And all of a sudden, if you're in a record label, like it's even more concentrated of what other people are like feeling about your music. You have more opinions in it. Right. Exactly. 